Welcome to this lecture. As described in the lecture on seismic risk, seismic risk is being calculated as a combination of three factors. The seismic hazard, the vulnerability of the buildings, and the exposure of the people in the buildings. In this lecture, I will explain how the building stock can be evaluated in terms of both vulnerability and exposure in order to determine the risk. The region of Groningen contains well over 150,000 populated buildings. To accurately calculate the seismic risk for the region, we would have to calculate the vulnerability for each individual building and combine it with the population exposed within that building. To do so for about 150,000 buildings is not possible in a reasonable time frame. Therefore, the vulnerability of the building stock is calculated for a group of buildings represented by a typology. To divide the building stock into typologies, a classification system can be used. Such a system groups together buildings with expected similar structural behavior. This grouping is done based on the combination of similar features such as building use, adjacency, material and structural system. First, you look at the main building use as it is often related to the structural system of a building. The building use can also be directly related to the number of people present in a building and therefore the exposure. For instance, a school differs from a terraced house in both structural system as well as people present throughout the day. Subsequently, you can divide the building groups by materials such as timber, masonry, steel and reinforced concrete buildings. This is closely related to the last attribute which focuses on the structural system. Within these groups, further subdivision is possible to allow for more accurate assessment of the building groups. This can be done using geometrical attributes to identify differences in building dimension and shape and structural attributes, such as building elements identifying, for instance, floor and wall materials. Let's now take a look at a practical example, in this case the town of Loppersum, which is located in the center of the region. By using the combination of the parameters that I just described, you can divide the building stock of Loppersum into groups of buildings represented by a typology. This results in the following overview where each individual building with its own specific attributes is now assigned to a typology based on expected similar behavior. Although the seismic performance is calculated at typology level, the variation in the building stock remains and should be taken into account when assessing the risk. If you take a closer look, you can see how many buildings are assigned to each typology. The majority of the buildings are assigned to the typologies detached, semi-detached and terraced houses. To better understand the typologies, let's examine the variability within each typology. This can be done by looking at the individual parameters within the building group in more detail. The overview shown here is an example of the variation observed when looking at several of these building parameters. The resulting charts can be used to identify the mean value as well as the spread for a certain parameter within the building group. The next step is linking the building information to the analysis in order to get a better understanding of the seismic behavior of the buildings. This is done by creating a model representing the typology based on a representative combination of parameters. Each individual building has a specific capability of withstanding seismic loading based on its own structural attributes. By calculating numerous instances of the typical building using the parametric spread observed in the building group, an overview of the vulnerability for the group can be determined. Then you can represent this vulnerability with a graph, relating the probability that a building will get damaged to the intensity of shaking during an earthquake. Using this graph, you can calculate the expected level of damage for the group in relation to a specific seismic event. You can do a similar exercise as just described for the town of Loppersum, for the entire building stock in Groningen region. In doing so, this overview of the typologies can be created. The vast majority, approximately 80% of the buildings, is assigned to the typologies detached, semi-detached and terraced houses. The amount of buildings in the typologies churches, schools and hospitals is low, resulting in a percentage close to 0%. If you look at the structural materials used, about 90% of the building stock consists of unreinforced masonry, followed by smaller amounts of concrete, steel and timber structures. Similar graphs, as presented in the Loppersum example, can subsequently be generated to create an overview of the vulnerability of the buildings for the region. 
as mentioned at the start of this lecture, the risk is not only related to the vulnerability of the buildings, but also to the exposure of the population within these buildings. By updating the graph, as shown to include the in population, you can see that the percentages start to shift. A very clear example are the apartments for which the percentage changes from 9% when related to the building stock to 28% when related to the population within these buildings. One thing to note is that as a consequence of the building function, the exposure can differ between day and night. For example, at night time there will be many people in residential buildings, while in commercial buildings few or no people are at all expected to be present. You can now combine the vulnerability of the buildings and population exposed within these buildings with the seismic hazard to calculate the seismic risk for the area. By altering any of the three parameters, the seismic risk can be changed. Thank you for your attention.